creative license. Don't wreck a good story with truth. <laughs> <laughs> now, not so very long ago, the people of a village so small as to be nameless shivered with fear in their beds. But every 10 years in the fall, since time began, a band of far-ranging nomads had raided And a winter without food is very hard to bear. Now, a river ran a few miles off, and at full flood in the spring, no one could cross without boats. But in the fall, the river fell, and a determined rider had little trouble. The village itself had but a dry creek and a little pond, although a lord had built himself a manor not five years past. So the villagers, placing their faith in their lord and the great house that he had built, begged his indulgence and protection, and being gracious, he welcomed all. But a visiting lady there, not placing all her faith in wooden walls or men-at-arms against hardened marauders, went to the priest. The priest was a young man, the something son of a noble with far too many children, <laughs> and quite new to his position. Few came to such a priest to confess, feeling strongly that mere mention of their sins to someone who looked so much like a child that his face was so smooth would increase them rather than absolve them. But now the lady came to him and said, Good father, if the marauders come against this house, it will not hold. It is possible that the horsemen will not breach it, but it is wood, and what they cannot take they will burn. The priest answered, Lady, I do have a plan which the lord of this manor dismissed, but perhaps with your aid and a few adjustments, it may still be accomplished. Two weeks later, when the runners brought the news that the raiders were but a half day's ride across the river, the lady and her retinue, taking the priest, slipped away in the chaos that descended on the manor. When the riders approached the river, they spied a figure thrashing in the water. Observing a lady's gown, they cast in a rope and drew her out. Clutching her veil close about her face, voice low with fatigue, she thanked them. The water was unusually strong this summer, and the ford has been cut away. Where then do we cross? The leader demanded. Farther down, replied she. Now they rode till nearly morning into marshy lowlands before the later signaled that this was the new fort. And when they were foundering in the mud, belly deep to a horse, a great wash of red water billowed down the river. The unmistakable scent of blood in the water, so suddenly around them, cast the horses and riders into chaos. And the water grew deeper around the riders buried in the mud. And as the riders turned back to flee to the bank, they were met by the lady, who, tossing back her veil and claiming a sword from a saddle, slew them with a blessing on her lips. Her arm was strong, and the riders, throwing pride to the wind, cried, sorcery, and others, who is their god? But only a few escaped the deep mud and her blade. And when the last were dispatched, the new New riders appeared from the other side of the river and hailed the lady across the red water. You owe me a gown, father, one cried, and the lady, wiping the blade on her water and blood ruined dress, stripped the veil from a shaven head and answered loudly, What? No thanks for my deeds? To which the lady answered, And were you not a priest? I would thank you more. Where did you come to know the sword? I wish to be a soldier, he replied, but my father asked for a priest on his deathbed, and I would not deny him. She said, I have lands of my own, and my husband has passed. Would you come to my home and be priest there? You will gain respect for your deeds. Agreeing, and after riding back to the manor and assuring them that the threat was ended, they set out. 
And if the nameless village was named that day amid much laughter and snide looks, then when the lady's manner and retinue, oh, I'm sorry, and if at the, then at the lady's manor there arrived not a holy man, but a new lord, then retinue whispered not a word, but that he was mighty with his sword. Thank <laughs> you.